Friends, welcome to yet another video in our series Finance and Investing Tidbits. But actually, it's the third video related to operating and financial leverage in video number one. I have discussed the concept in video number two. I have talked about its interpretation in the context of what went wrong with Kingfisher. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the care that we as equity investors should take by understanding this concept of operating and financial leverage. Remember to download the Excel file, uh, which I have provided in uh, the video number one related to operating and financial leverage, where I have explained the concepts. So you can actually download that Excel file and study, um, you know, how the operating and financial leverage can be calculated so that you can yourself do it in respect of any company. This is what I try and do in respect of as many videos as possible so that you become independent in managing your own money. So uh, welcome to this video. Let's see what is that we should take care of and how we can benefit from these two concepts. So as I have already discussed, those of you who have seen my financial wellness videos, um, I have very specifically mentioned this that, uh, you know, quite often investors run after returns and they invite risks. Actually, it should be the other way. We should manage our risks. We should avoid errors which are common to investing and the returns automatically happen. So uh, return is a byproduct. Risk management is the key. So, of course, I will share with you the link to financial wellness video also in the description box. But the point I'm making is that that is the underlying theme of my investing. As a result, you know, I focus on risk management and the, uh, the returns happen. So I've been compounding very well, but I have not been running after returns. So this is something which is very important. So this is one such video which will make you aware about the potential errors that can happen in investing. And if you take care of them, you increase your chances to be a winner. So uh, from that perspective, look at this video. And of course, those of you who have landed on this video directly without having enough framework about operating and financial leverage, I would request you to have a look at those two videos. Again, the links to which I would provide in the description box. So do see those and then perhaps come to this video. Now, as I have always maintained and, uh, you know, something which has worked for me is that for retail investors, defensive strategy to investing is something very beneficial and works best. So as a principle, what I have done in my own case is that I invest in companies which have either negligible debt or very low debt. So naturally, such companies are low financial leverage companies. Uh, so the only risk that works on us is the operating leverage, right? So companies which have negligible or no debt on their balance sheet uh, have very less financial leverage uh, and a no debt company or a very low debt company is more resilient to economic ups and downturns. And uh, by managing this risk and by being defensive, we can actually increase our allocation to equities. That's the underlying theme, which I've talked about in my part one of the financial wellness video. Again, the link to which I'll share here. So important thing is, you know, rather than uh, investing uh, in equities, creating a very high risk, defensive investing with more allocation to equities works much better. So like I have discussed, and disclosed in my financial wellness video number one. Uh, personally, more than 95% of my savings are exposed to equity as an asset class. And naturally, I have to be very defensive. And that works well for me. But that improves the overall weighted average uh, return for me. So that's something which is important. Again, explore my videos. I have elaborated on each of those concepts. So if a company in which you have invested undertakes massive expansion, let's say, or undertakes massive acquisition of another company and uses debt to fund that acquisition or expansion, then you have to be very careful. Now, what you need to check are a couple of things. What you need to check is whether this transaction is happening when there is a lot of negativity around. So economic activities is very weak, like what we experienced during COVID times or again during this recent time of uh, you know, the second or third wave that the economic activity becomes slower. And if these problems are severe and at that time, this transaction of acquisition or expansion is happening, 
when there is a lot of negativity around, there is a good chance that once this negativity is over, the economic activity will take an upturn. And in that case, if the company is expanding, taking advantage of this downturn and is buying another business cheap or is acquiring another company cheap or is taking undertaking expansion by investing less than it would when everything is booming, then you should remain invested because when the upcycle in the, in the economic starts, the operating and financial leverage is, work, is going to work in your favor because as we had seen, um, if the sales go up by say 10%, uh, the total leverage would mean that your profits can zoom. Now, if the company is creating leverage when there is blood on the street or there is a lot of economic weakness, then you should definitely stay invested in this company because any upswing in sales and in, and in economic activity would result in a multiplier effect in profits and you would benefit a lot, right? This is very similar to buying a residential property when uh, the real estate is in doldrums and nobody is buying properties and you take a loan and buy a property and then the cycle turns and the property prices start going up and you have borrowed money. Now that investment is going to pay off handsomely to you. So this equity investing principle also is very similar and uh, when the expansion is happening at the worst economic time when there is blood on the street those investments by those companies also work out to their advantage and uh, your investment can then multiply. However, if this acquisition is happening when the markets are all booming, you have to actually exit that stock because any downswing in the economic activity or economic contraction would result in fall in sales and a multiplier fall in profits. So uh, those of you who have not seen the Kingfisher Airlines video, uh, do watch it because this is what exactly happened that you acquire another airline when things are booming, but then you borrow money and when there is a pressure on sales, then you suffer. So quite often what happens is many acquisitions are driven by ego and the craving to become big at a wrong time can be very dangerous. Uh, and particularly if that craving is funded out of massive borrowings. And remember when uh, everything is going great in the economy, uh, cost of financing is high, uh, you know, acquiring anything is very expensive. And then when there is a downturn, uh, you're going to face a lot of its music. Also what happens is uh, almost 70, 75% acquisitions and mega mergers globally have failed uh, because, you know, uh, they are all happening because of egos of leadership rather than economic merit and in such situations it is much better that investors simply exit on such a merger or acquisition announcement because when that merger or acquisition is consummated is going to create a lot of challenges and any downturn there is going to create a massive impact on profits so much better to exit now imagine a situation where you know, uh, you have cash available and the market has undergone a massive correction. Again, I'm now talking about, uh, you know, a different scenario. Now, at such a time, the high operating and high financial leverage companies are the best bet to invest. Why? Because, uh, you know, during the fall, which has already happened, the correction which has happened, these are the companies where uh, the beating in the stock price would have been the maximum. They would also tend to be high beta shares. And again, see my video on beta. Beta indicates to us what is likely a change in the price of a particular share with reference to the change in the market. So high operating and high financial leverage companies would tend to have high beta and any correction uh, would have meant that their prices would have cracked a lot. So you can really get them cheap. And when the market upswing happens, their prices would also recover much faster, right? So uh, you can focus on these high beta companies or high operating and high financial leverage companies, which have been badly beaten down by the market as a very good investment strategy uh, during the market bottoms. Right? And of course, those of you who are interested can explore my beta video, the link to which I will share in the description box. 
Now, if the markets are really going very high, very gung ho, uh, right? Because people think it's boom time, right? There is a lot of buying which is happening, which is mindlessly. Then uh, exit those companies which are high leverage companies because any downturn in the market would mean that these high leverage, high beta companies would fall far more rapidly than other stocks. Of course, when you sell, you can do a staggered sales strategy. You don't have to go and sell all your shares in one go. Stagger them because sometimes the market anomaly can continue longer than what you expect. So you should not get into a situation which where you have to regret by selling in one go. So always better to sell in a staggered way. All right. Uh, and so that you can take advantage of a higher price uh, in case the market goes up even higher than what the current boom time suggests. So uh, you should be able to take some advantage of that also. Uh, but then better to exit from such stocks because these high leverage companies, which will be high beta, will be beaten down very, very significantly during a market downturn. So this is a care that you need to take while investing and you should use operating and financial leverage understanding for the same. For more such videos, do explore our channel, Dr. Abhijit Fadnis. Thank you.